Jesus. I can shout when I think about this. He reaches out. He's come on up. And he takes him up into the chariot. As he continues to read from Isaiah 53. He's led as a sheep to, a, as, to the slaughter. And as a sheep before a shearer is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He began to continue to read more and more and more. And then he looked at this man because God's working on the heart of the Ethiopian too. And he says, uh, sir, uh, I'm just curious. Who is he speaking about? Is he speaking about himself or somebody else? <laughs> Who in the world? Can you imagine how? Can you imagine having an opening just that good, friends? Who is he speaking about? Is he talking about himself? Is Isaiah speaking about Isaiah? Or, or is there somebody else that was going to come after Isaiah? Is there somebody else that was going to be led as a sheep to the slaughter? Is there somebody else that was going to be wounded? Is there somebody else that was going to be bruised? Is there somebody else who the chastisement of my peace was going to be on him? And by his stripes, I'm going to be healed. Is there somebody else? Who the iniquity of the whole world is going to be laid on? Is there some? Who is this? Tell me. Who is this talking about? I've been reading the scripture and I've been pondering. I've been praying. I've been contemplating. I've got to have some answers. And Philip said, well, let me tell you about a man named Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just a few years ago. Right there in Jerusalem where you're coming from, this man named Jesus, he was taken to Pilate's court. He was actually found guilty of crimes he didn't commit. They actually began to whoop him and to chastise him and to beat him and to bruise him until his face was marred more than any man else's face was marred. Let me tell you a little bit more about this man named Jesus. This man named Jesus, friends, he was taken from Pilate's court. He was led up the Via Della Rosa. He was beaten while he was carrying his own cross. Finally, they laid him on a cross and they nailed nails through his hands and nails through his feet and they put a crown of thorns on his head and they hung him up between two thieves outside of the city. Let me tell you about a man named Jesus. When he was hanging on that cross between two thieves, friends, God himself, friends, actually hid his face from his own son. It became dark around the cross. There was an earthquake as he died on that cross. But I'm also here to tell you that not only did he die, but early on Sunday morning, that same Jesus got up with a power in his hands. And I'm here to tell you that that same Jesus is coming back again very soon. So go ahead, Ethiopian, give your life to him. The Ethiopian so happy. He's shouting so much. Can you imagine? They had church right there, friends, in the carriage. They had church. And as they kept on going, the camels must have known that some water was nearby. He said, look, here's some water. Here's some water. Here's some water. Why, why, why do we need to wait? Go ahead and baptize me now. This is in the story. Marina, is that right? Go ahead and baptize me now. Even Philip would I. Lord, I don't know. I don't know. He had gone. Can I? Can I? Can he had gone through all 28 fundamental beliefs? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Well, I did mean to say that. He had gone through all the different studies. Wait a minute. Are you sure he's he's ready? And God's already had him had, had him ready. Go ahead and baptize him. I'm talking about the wind. Look what the Bible says. You all have to see this because you. Have, I'm talking about the wind of the Spirit of God. You see, friends, when you allow God to blow you, God can blow you. Man, this is some good stuff. The Bible says, look what the Bible says in verse 37 of Acts chapter 8. It says, and Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. But look what the Bible says in verse 39. I'm talking about the wind, the blowing of the Spirit of God. You see, friends, when you dive to self more and more and more, God can blow you more and more and more. Look what verse 39 says. And when they were come up out of the water, <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord, what did he do? He caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing, but Philip was found. Did you get what the Bible said? Yeah. Philip was found, and as the 
Gentiles. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea, which means, friends, that the Spirit of God, if we would allow him to, he could blow us to the point where people who would see us at one point may never see us again. You could be standing in somebody's presence right now, and the next thing you know, they're looking for you, and you're literally gone. That's what the Bible, am I reading that correctly, friends? I never will forget. I've never experienced it on Philip's level. But I used to do literature evangelism. I used to do literature evangelism when I was a student at Oakwood. And we were in this parking lot. And I was there with some others who'd been, who, who were really deep into this stuff. And it was the weirdest thing. First, I was walking from person to person. And I'd be giving them a, a this, is, um, this is a happiness digest I'm giving to you on a donation basis. Whatever you give will help us through school, da 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 And we were just giving to, and then they looked at, then, then some of my coworkers, they came up to me because they were real serious about it. They said, Dwan, well, why are you slow? Why are you walking? Run. Honest truth. This is the honest truth. This is what happened. I began to run. And I've never had this happen other than when I was working for the Lord. I literally was running all day and I never got tired. I was running all the way across the parking lot from this person to this person to this person to this person to this person. And I was literally not even getting tired because when you work for God, the Bible says they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. When you work for Jesus, friends, God makes it his priority to take care of the energy, friends. He recuperates your body. He gives you extra strength. And you find yourself doing things you never expected to do because it's not even you. It's God working through you, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. God just needs somebody who says, God, if you want to blow me here, I'll be blown here. If you want to blow me there, I'll be blown there. If you want to take me here, I'll go. Go, friends, and I'm not going to stop until God has finished his work in me and through me because God has some spectacular things to do through some people in here. Ellen White says this. She says there's no secret. There's no limit, excuse me, to the usefulness of one who putting self aside makes room for the working of the Holy Spirit and lives a life solely consecrated to God. That means, friends, there's no limit to what God can do through you. We are the ones who put limits on it. We're the ones who put the brakes on the Spirit of God working through us. It's a strong statement, friends. We're putting the brakes on the wind blowing us. We're putting the brakes. We're saying, God, I don't want to go there. Because it's desert. Oh, oh, what? Did I say that? I don't want to go there. Because there's no profit in going there. Am I talking to somebody here? I don't want to go there because it didn't seem like I'm going to be successful there. It's not about you trusting in your own rationale. He said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. What has the Spirit of God been blowing you to do? What has he been asking you to do? He said to Philip, you've had success in Samaria, but out now I'm blowing you into the desert. I have a friend, his name is Abi, Ethiopian. I talked about this a few Sabbaths ago, but not specifically about this, but he's from Ethiopia. In that country, of all the nations in Africa, there was one nation that was never totally overtaken by Europeans during colonialism. <coughs> Ethiopia. Ethiopia was a Christian nation, and it maintained its independence for 2,000 years. And maybe it's just because of the fact that Philip was willing to be blown to that Ethiopian eunuch. Because God knew that Ethiopian eunuch was going to be so high <laughs> on Jesus 
that he wasn't going to keep it to himself. He was going to go back and he was going to say, Candace, hey, queen, I got to tell you somebody. I know you're my queen and I usually bow down to you, but, but I heard about a man named Jesus. And I'm bowing down at his feet too. And I want to give you some good counsel. If I was you, Candace, I would ask you to bow down as well. Bow down at the feet of Jesus. And that whole nation, Ethiopia, became a Christian nation. Why? Because Philip listened to the voice of the Spirit of God. Amen. He was willing to be blown. So I ask again, where is the Spirit of God blowing you? Forgive me for what I'm about to say. I'm not going to ask. I'm not. No, I'm not going to ask for forgiveness. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> this church, we celebrated 110 years. Mm. Praise God. Mm. It was at 1909. But in 110 years, there's only one church for the South Central Conference in all of Pensacola. Maybe, just maybe, it's because somebody, God has been blowing on somebody. <laughs> but you know what they did? They remained seated. Uh -huh. And they stayed put. While opportunities them by. What is the Spirit of God telling you to do? I'll tell you, I don't even know. I, I'm going to divulge this. I'm going to divulge this. I usually don't, but I'm going to divulge this. I was at church a few, a couple weeks ago. I think it was a Monday. And I was leaving and I went to my car. You can play Sister Watson. And as I went to my car, I sat there in my car and I prayed a prayer. I said, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Weirdest thing. I just said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I think, I, I'm going to say I think, I think. I won't say the place. Chester knows the place. But I won't say it. The Spirit of God, I felt, told me, go to this particular place. I was like, why? But I went. Got out of my car, went into the building, and I just started walking around in the building, and lo and behold, I looked at this particular room in the building. I'll just tell you, I'll just tell you, I'll just tell you. in us and I think God wants to do more through us and, I said, and so I was walking around in this building I'll just tell you it was the library I'm walking around the library and I see this conference room I don't even know why I was there and the lady said the lady said this library she said she said, you know, people start churches here. People start churches here. I was like, oh, okay. So, I'll just, I'm just going to say it. So I said, I, 
can't, I couldn't rent a room because I'm not a, I don't live in Scambia County. I live in Santa Rosa County. But there is a person who lives in Scambia County. He's a member of our church. Went back. And we're just going to start a little Bible study there. We're going to start a little Bible study there on a Sabbath afternoon. Amen? Because if the Spirit of God blows you somewhere, we should be willing to follow. And if we don't win anybody but an Ethiopian eunuch, I'll say hallelujah. Because God doesn't need, I heard a story, I heard a story, I'm, I'm through, I'm going to tell the story, I'm through. This evangelist was preaching at, during a week of prayer, he was preaching during a week of prayer. And he preached and he preached and he preached, he preached his heart out. And it seemed like nobody gave their life to Christ except for one young gangster from New York City. In fact, the gangster was sitting next to his friend, and his friend, when he stood, he asked his friend, don't you want to stand? And his friend told him, he said, man, it's too hard to serve the Lord. That friend ended up serving a life sentence in prison. Wow. That one man that he won to Christ ended up becoming one of the greatest evangelists in the church. Amen. Won tens of thousands of people to Jesus Christ. Because God, God, God may not lead you when he blows you to a many, many a person. He may want you to re reach one person, but he's looking for that person who's going to be open enough to the Spirit of God to say, Here am I, Lord. Send me. Here am I, Lord. Send me. I'll go where you 